United States Navy combat photographers have been involved in every major American conflict since the First World War, embedding with every military service branch to document what was happening on the ground, in the air, and under the sea. Combat camera uh, was born out of World War II. So I was in, in 1942, uh, the Navy created the first nine combat photographic units, uh, CPUs. Uh, about four to, to six people they deployed uh, to the Pacific and European theaters of war, uh, even in, to North Africa. And it was, it was those teams that uh, created almost 80% of the Navy's publicly released imagery from all of World War II. Later on, while all the others got going, and then at the end of the war, we had all kinds of photographers out there in Okinawa. But there were only 10 of us that covered the world in the beginning. The Korean conflict underscored the Navy's need for a photographic unit able to deploy at a moment's notice, making them an asset to combatant commanders during the Vietnam War. Uh, and it wasn't until the onset of the Korean War, roughly around 1951, that uh, the Pacific Fleet uh, established their, uh, their first real combat camera uh, group. After the Korean War, we became, on the East Coast here, uh, uh, mobile photographic units. And it wasn't until the U.S. entered uh, the war in Vietnam, uh, and it was in 1966, that uh, we became Atlantic Fleet Combat Camera. Uh, and we have documented every major U.S.-involved conflict uh, ever since. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, combat cameras' deployment pace remained high, documenting conflicts and military exercises around the world. But after September 11, 2001, the United States became involved in Afghanistan and Iraq, and the need for timely visual information was again at an all-time high. Looks like six, seven floors were taken out, and there's more oh, explosions there's, oh, right now. Hold on, people are running. Hold on. Hold on just Hearing the, the radio, you know, saying that we are now in DEFCON 3, it was like, yeah, I got to get back to the command. So I'm sending everybody out the door. You know, we got guys going to New York, we got shooters going on the ships. Then a few days later, I was on the Roosevelt and we were heading for the Indian Ocean. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you, good night, and God bless America. I literally went into Iraq within one or two months of getting the combat camera. Navy combat camera was the only combat camera that was allowed to jointly work with the um, Special Operation Forces. I mean, this is where combat photographers separate themselves from other Navy sailors because it takes a unique individual to be able to handle those type stressors, knowing how to, to keep your mind straight while you have nothing but stressors all day long. You never know when you might die or you, you may get in fire. I mean, which happens, and it happens, well, it happened a lot for me. It's going out, a lot of it ultimately to the front line somewhere. And, you know, uh, you're putting your life on the line, you know, for this job, you know. And, you know, for some of us, it, you know, some of us love that thrill of that. Or some, you know, truly believe in the power of, you know, their job in providing imagery that can do so many things. As operations in the Middle East wound down, combat cameras saw a shift in missions from wartime documentation to training and sustainment. Sailors routinely deployed in support of various commands to tell their stories all over the world. I got to combat camera during a transitional period. As the U.S. started to dial back its involvement in the Middle East, we had to switch gears and refocus our main priorities. Uh, we still conduct sustainment in case that task ever does arrive where we might need to go back into combat. Communicate, communicate. We've also started to focus more on humanitarian missions and also doing training exercises and just working a lot more with other allied nations. We have combat cameramen all over the world at any given time. We've had guys diving in the Arabian Gulf in 110 degree weather and at the same time 
we had guys up in the Arctic Circle in negative 30. Uh, with our capabilities, there's nowhere that we can't go. Most jobs around the fleet, you know, people are kind of stuck in their corner of the Navy. Um, but one of the side effects of having the broad spectrum of capabilities that we have is we get sent everywhere. You get, really get to see all the different communities and all the different cultures within the Navy. And in all those experiences that I had, um, I got to meet great people and uh, now I have memories that I'll never forget. So although Navy Combat Camera is disestablishing, the Combat Camera men and women uh, have left a lasting legacy, a 70 uh, plus year legacy, which can be seen uh, today and can be seen tomorrow through their iconic imagery. You know, this unit is not just a command, it's a, it's a fraternity, it's a family, it's a family that has uh, gone through wars together, it's gone, literally gone to the ends of the earth to tell the Navy story and I, I think given the choice, we would do it all over again.